What's up, LTD addicts? Let's talk about Stackme. It's an Airtable replacement. Kinda. Stay tuned, I'll tell you more. Hey everybody, my name is Dave Swift from ThatLTD.life where I review software tools with lifetime offers. And let's get right into it. It is a new year, happy 2020. This is the first LTD from AppSumo in the new year. So I'm really excited to get going on it. Now I mentioned in the intro that StackB right here is a little bit of an Airtable competitor. I think that's fair to say. Now, if you're not familiar with what Airtable is, let me give you the, the quick TLDR version. So Airtable is essentially a spreadsheet that acts like a database? Or is it a database that acts like a spreadsheet? Well, it's kind of hard to tell, right? So everybody knows how to use spreadsheets, but not everybody understands databases unless you're a developer. So people started using spreadsheets like databases and then Airtable was born. So if you need to be able to create relationships between data that looks like a spreadsheet, you'll probably like what Stackby has in store for you, or you'll also like Airtable. So let's get right into it. Here are the plans and codes. Let's scroll down. It says 59 bucks is going to get you in the door. This is stackable up to five codes. Now, what you're getting as you stack is, uh, it's important to detail here. So Stackby uses something called a workspace to divide up uh, actually, in their documentation, they, they recommend having, say, a workspace for each department in your business. So if you have like a sales department, you'd have a workspace for them. If you have a marketing department, you might have a workspace for them. If you have maybe a design department, they might want their own workspace as well. Now, with this AppSumo deal, you are only going to get one workspace and it doesn't scale as you stack. You just get the one and then everything that we're adding on is additional users, additional storage space, uh, things like that. So let's go through and I will uh, outline this a little bit more in detail. So for that first code, we are going to get two users. And then as we stack codes, we'll get two additional users per code. There is also a limitation on attachments uh, per stack. Now a stack in stack B language is essentially just a database or, you know, what you would normally think of as like a, a spreadsheet with maybe multiple pages or something like that. So for uh, your deal here, you'll get 10 gigabytes per stack and you're going to get 20 stacks for that first code. Now here's where it gets to me a little bit, you know, it's not really reasonable. As we stack, we get two more users, but we're only getting an additional five gigabytes of space per code rather than, you know, the, the double the allotment. And then we're also only getting five more databases per stack. And you know what? They're also going to increase how big our database can be, how many rows that spreadsheet could have is probably the simplest way I can explain it. That's going to go up by 5,000 as well. I think it would be, uh, you know, since they're already constricting us to the number of workspaces here, I think it would be really generous if they could revise this plan and say just double the allotment. So instead of going from two to four users, uh, actually keeping the two to four users, but instead of going from 10 gigabytes to 15 gigabytes, they give us 20 and, and uh, 20 databases per code. So it would go up to 40 and then, you know, additional 10,000 rows for each one. I think that seems like it would get AppSumo uh, fans a little bit more excited than they necessarily are. And the reason is that Airtable has a pretty compelling free plan. Let's go over to Airtable.com uh, just to kind of see the, uh, the plus and minus here, because you might look at this and be like, well, I can get this for free. Why would I even bother no matter how good Stackby is? And there, there might be some things that keep you interested in Stackby. So, so hang on there. But you can see here we get unlimited bases, which is what they call workspaces. Uh, and you're going to be, uh, excuse me, those that's what they call databases. Uh, so you're going to get unlimited of those for free. They have a completely free unlimited plan here. And the, the major thing is you're only going to get 1,200 uh, uh, lines or records per, per base for the free plan, and you get two gigabytes of attachments per uh, base. So if you have an outside uh, area that you can use for storage, maybe that would help you get by, uh, depending on your use case, of course. And then you also have a very short revision history here of only two weeks. Now, if you jump up to their paid plan, which is you know really only 10 bucks per user per month, uh, you're gonna get uh, substantially more information here. So it's gonna go from uh, you know 1,200 to 5,000, two gigabytes per base, 
base to five gigabytes per base, and then a much longer revision history here of six months. Now, I told you there might be a reason you definitely want to go with Stackby over Airtable, and that is because of their API integration. So they have API integrations with several very popular services that might be very interesting to you, depending on what services you're already using. So, so let's jump in over to Stackby. I'll give you a quick tour of how everything works before we go ahead and look at how some of those API connections integrate. So here is the tour. Here's the main dashboard, I should say. Uh, I've got my first workspace here, which is what they title it by default. And I've gone ahead and added some of their, their templates to my workspace to just kind of see uh, some of their example use cases. So let's go ahead and if I wanted to create a new workspace, I could do that right here. But you can see it says added a workspace. So you might be wondering what's going on here. You said we only get one workspace. Well, it turns out they will add an additional workspace, but it kicks you into this free trial right here as you can see. Now, what you wanna do once you have your workspace set up is add what they call a stack. Now that's a database or a base if you're used to Airtable. You can see right here, I've got four stacks already added and this is just from their templates. I've got a small business CRM, an applicant tracker. So if you're taking in uh, you know, applicants for a job position, a project tracker to kind of make it like a project management system, and then a video production planning and tracking uh, database here. So let's go ahead and add a new stack. And I'm actually going to do it from a template so that you can see all of the templates that are available. And I can notice right here a little UI glitch. I'm clicking on add a stack and it's disappearing before I can actually get over there. That's like ultimate frustration, right? So it's like, uh, race, all right. Now, luckily there is another way to add a template here since I'm having trouble with this button. I can go up to the menu bar right here and click templates, or, and there's also this little notification that takes me to the template gallery. You can see they have uh, probably two dozen or so different categories here, and then depending on the category, there are several different templates. This education one is the only template that is uh, available. There's one for design here something for creatives. We got film production planning, uh, film production cash flow, uh, gallery asset management. So you can see they've thought of a lot of different use cases here. Now, this might look pretty impressive if you've never seen Airtable, because if I just head over to Airtable, you're gonna notice they stole this design even on the, the template gallery almost exactly. So this is Airtable and this is Stackby. Uh, we can see the co colors they're using are red, orange, and blue. And here we have red, orange, and blue, but they really mix it up because they put green in their logo. Okay, so, you know, UI aside, this is just a browser for a, a uh, gallery. It's not, this isn't criminal or anything. Uh, I'm not trying to, to say that they were, uh, you know, just completely stealing from them. But if we go into, say, the creative category here, we can see they have far more templates already in Airtable because Airtable is established. They've been around for quite a while. Uh, and so they've got a lot more templates already built out, more categories, more to choose from. So again, free version is looking pretty good at this point. And stick around, I'm going to tell you why you might want to hang on to Stack B, uh, especially for that one time cost. All right, let's go ahead and just add something in here. I'm going to go under marketing. I am a marketer. So that's important to me. How about email marketing? I mean, that's a subject I'm focused on at the moment. Let's go under email marketing. And I will click on use this stack. Now that is going to drop it into my workspace once I choose which workspace I want. And of course, I'm going to use my first workspace, which was the AppSumo code, you can see that has it applied up here. And uh, by the way, I should probably clear out this uh, demo workspace so I don't end up uh, getting any sort of alert message that I need to, to send them some money. So I can click this little disclosure triangle here and just go down to delete workspace. Oh, it's hiding from me again. I don't know what's going on here. All right, I really had to remove fast there before the menus disappeared, but I eventually did get this workspace to be removed. Now it didn't go away, so I'm actually gonna reload the page here and make sure that that is actually gone. All right, there it is, it is gone. Let's go ahead and check out what the product actually looks like in the inside. And here is the email marketing database that I just created. And you can see at the top, we have three different tabs. There is emails, topics, and segments. So the way this works is that you can create relationships uh, between the different sections of the database. So for example, under emails, we have uh, the different subject lines that would be used, the body text right here. If there were any graphics included, we could add them right here. 
the goal of the email, the topic of the email, the segments of the email, uh, if it created any leads, the date it was sent, the status. Now, you're gonna notice that some of these columns up here have these little arrows facing uh, the opposite direction of each other, and that's to signify that these are linked columns. So if we click the disclosure triangle here, we can go to change column property, and you'll see over here on the right that this is currently a linked column, and it's linked to this topics table up here at the top. So the information that we see in this topics field is actually going to show up over here as an actual topic. And so that's kind of the main point of using a spreadsheet that acts like a database. The idea might be that you want to find all of the different product features uh, that you've got emails created for. You can go under topics and then view the product features. You'll be able to see all of the emails that are available under that topic. So it's a really good way to be able to sort data by different relationships. The hard part about it is obviously setting up those relationships. So it's really nice that they have some templates created for you to begin with. There's a search bar up here. So, you know, if you wanted to look for something like survey, I could do that and you'll see that there is a survey result right here. I can scroll to the next one and this line right here has the survey information that I'm looking for. So it's, you know, obviously you're gonna need to be able to search a database as it gets bigger and bigger. So that is an important feature to have operate correctly. Now let's talk about some of the other types of columns that we can have. So if I click on this disclosure triangle again, we'll go back to that screen where it says change column property. And before we were looking at a linked column, if I click right here, I'll be able to see all of the different types of columns that you can have. You can have short text, long text, number base, date and time, checkbox. Obviously we can do file uploads or attachments as that was the original column before I began. We have different collaborator options, URLs, formulas, which they say is in beta the date that it was created, the updated time, uh, we already looked at linked columns. And here is the important one, APIs. Now it's important because this might be something that you have to pay extra for if you're using something like Airtable. So let's go back out to the main home page here or the, the dashboard and we'll take a look at what integrations are included. If I click up here at the top, I can see it says integrations and I'll be able to go through the different integrations that they have. Now they don't have like a hundred different integrations, right? I think it is about 20 or so, right? So we got, uh, that's 12, 15. There's 15 different integrations available right now. Although there are ones that might be interesting to you. We've got Slack, uh, which is you know kind of a no-brainer to me. Everybody's using Slack. We've got YouTube, Hunter.io, so that you can get uh, email addresses in. Uh, we have PageSpeed from Google, MailChimp, WhatsApp, Twilio, a lot of really big names when it comes to APIs. Uh, so I think this is definitely the killer feature. If you're a hardcore user of one of these applications already, then that's gonna be the thing that pushes you over the edge to grab Stackby. Now I'd mentioned that there are some CRM possibilities here or project management templates, and how do they hold up? Are they gonna be able to replace your uh, Sana or Trello or whatever it is that you're already in love with? Well. Probably not at this phase. So let's look at say this project tracker. This is gonna be very, very basic here. Uh, you'd have the project name, um, some notes, some categories. There's different views. I haven't mentioned the views yet. You can see up here, if I click on all projects, I'm gonna be able to look at this as say a due date calendar. It's gonna pop this open. It's a little bit sluggish to load up the calendar. We'll give it a second here. Now notice it's kind of cycling the saving here. It looks like it's having some problems. I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh this page. All right, there we go. As soon as I refresh, it, the calendar popped open. So it may have been uh, a connectivity thing here, but you can see now we're in calendar view where I could see any upcoming projects that are due. However, this certainly isn't as full featured as a project management platform. Like I use ClickUp and ClickUp can do a calendar view. It can also do 10 bajillion other things. Uh, I don't think it would be versatile enough for my team and also adding enough codes to get it up to the point where I can have, you know, a full team. We can really only add, you know, two codes or two members per code you can only get up to 10 different uh, members on here. If you had clients or something you wanted to share this, it's really not meant to be a project management system. It could get by if you know, you're just kind of a, a solopreneur, you work with a partner, uh, it might be able to get you by, but you probably would be happier with a dedicated project management system. And here is their small business CRM template. Again, you're probably gonna be happier with a dedicated CRM, but if you only have very basic needs, like you wanna have a list of all your clients, uh, their main contacts, their phone numbers, things like that, 
that. Of course, you can add your own columns. I haven't mentioned that throughout this video, but I hope that's obvious. You can click this little plus button, add your own columns. If you wanted to insert a column, you can click right here. We've seen this disclosure triangle before. We can insert a column to the left, insert a column to the right. So you can customize this to fit your business needs. You're certainly not restricted to the templates, but for demonstration purposes, they certainly are convenient to show off what they're capable of. But what I'm getting at with this CRM is there's no real way to, to track any sort of pipeline or to uh, you know mention any emails or pull in emails like a lot of CRMs are going to be able to do for you. Uh, so you know it's going to be a real bare bones uh, almost like using a Google Sheet type of scenario, except you're just gonna have that deeper linking ability built into the Stackbee database. All right, so my final thoughts on Stackbee. Well, I gotta be honest, I think that most people are gonna be better off just going with the free plan for Airtable. You're not gonna have to pay anything until you outgrow their rather generous allotments, and then it's only 10 bucks per user per month. It's, you know, it's not a one-time shot, but it's really not a huge substantial investment. So the pros and cons here for, you know, thinking of LTDs is, you know, somewhat a little bit of a gamble. It's not an established company versus going with an established company and possibly having to pay them to grow as your business expands, I think it's pretty obvious here that Airtable is going to be a little bit of an easier choice. Now, if the plans were a little bit more generous with Stackbee, if they were you know, more on the unlimited side, you could have uh, dozens of users, that might sway my opinion the other way. It looks like it's a fairly solid product. It still has some kinks to work out, like with that mouse hovering, but they have the main functionality already built out. It's certainly not a version one or a beta product. So you can feel good about investing in it if it's something that fits for you, if you're one of those API cases where you know it's really, really gonna help you out. Otherwise, just stick with Airtable. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a 6.4 out of 10. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you head over to the Facebook group, click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you're notified when new reviews are posted. And of course, we'll have our link for Stackbee down below in the description. If you're going to go ahead and make a purchase of Stackbee or really anything else at AppSumo and you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and click that link. I'll see you in the next review.